Good afternoon, everyone. It's John here from Uni Taster Days, and I'm going to be hosting this event today. This is a Uni Taster Tuesday, and we run these events every single Tuesday, and it's all about supporting you, as in students, to make informed university decisions. This event today, given that results day is this Thursday, is going to be a clearing special, and I'm delighted to be joined by Hannah from the University of East Anglia and Catriona from the University of Buckingham, who are, who are both going to run sessions today. Hannah is going to when a session uh, looking at what to expect on the on the essentially on the day of clearing which even though clearing has essentially already started the main day of clearing will be this coming thursday which is a level results day and hannah's going to uh, cover a session looking at what to expect on that day and then Katriona, who has joined us from the university of buckingham is going to do a session looking at how to prepare for thursday and how to prepare for clearing and essentially more information about what it is um, so that you can go into it being fully aware of what to expect during the day. I'm very conscious that you've tuned in for these events to hear from our excellent speakers and not for myself. So I'm going to keep this introduction very, very short. The final thing I'll say is if you've got any friends or family that are interested in watching this as well, we'll get this event on the unitastedays.com forward slash Tuesdays page by tomorrow so that they can see this um, details about the event before, before clearing starts, in, in, in the main part of clearing starts this coming Thursday. So with that, I'm going to introduce our first speaker today, that's Katriona Oldershaw, who is joining us from the University of Buckingham. Katriona is very, very busy this week, so I'm delighted that she's offered her time to support this event today. She's the Associate Director of Admissions and Recruitment at the University of Buckingham, and will offer um, a really, really good session looking at how to prepare for clearing and, and essentially what, what it is, um, so you can make the most of it. And with that, I'll pass the floor to Katriona, please. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. So my presentation is uh, about clearing what it is and how to prepare for it. Uh, I'm Katriana Oldershaw, Associate Director of Admissions and Recruitment at the University of Buckingham, uh, and it is a very busy week for us, uh, but quite an exciting one too. What I'm going to cover in this presentation uh, is just to look at what clearing is, and I'm going to also talk a little bit about adjustment. Um, and then I'm going to look at why it might be relevant for you this year, and then how to prepare for it. So what is clearing? Well, in a nutshell, it's a way to find a university place if your firm and insurance university choices have both rejected you, or you decide you want to go into clearing. So that might be because you've changed your mind about what you want to study um, or where you want to study. And so you can put yourself into clearing by declining your unconditional firm offer using the decline my place button on UCAS track. I think Hannah might talk about that a bit more in terms of what happens on, uh, on clearing day. Um, so yeah, it's, it, clearing could be um, something that happens to you, a university, uh, your university choices don't offer you places. Um, it equally could be something um, that you decide to participate in. So what's adjustment? I'm not going to go into masses of detail about adjustment, but essentially uh, it's available where you have met and exceeded the conditions of your firm offer. Um, when you've done that, you could decide to have a bit of a look around to see whether there are any other courses you might prefer. And the great thing about adjustment is that you don't need to um, give up your firm place to enter adjustment. So if you log in on results day and find that your status is um, reads congratulations and you've been confirmed, you'll see there's a bu button over here um, saying find out about and register for adjustment. So if you click on that, it will talk you through everything you need to do to participate in an adjustment. But essentially, you would call universities you're interested in, explain your adjustment, confirm that they um, would be happy to offer you a place, um, and then over that phone call, you would verbally accept their offer, and that enables that university to add themselves to your UCAS application. And then you have five days to consider whether to change to that course or to stick with your firm choice. And if you do nothing, you end up um, with your firm choice by default. 
So there are no exams this year, obviously. Um, so it's incredibly different from a lot of other years. Um, and I think it does mean that more people potentially could end up in clearing uh, than normal years. Um, there's been a lot in the news about this, particularly with Scottish higher results coming out uh, yesterday. Um, so hopefully you all understand that your results are not just going to reflect your predicted grades and your mock exam results. So your school will only be allocated a certain number of A stars, A's, B's, C's, etc., based on uh, the past performance of other students at your school in those subjects. Um, so the, the body called Ofqual, which is finalizing all of the grades, um, is using your school's past performance to calibrate the predicted grades that your teachers uh, have, have given you, um, and that will determine how many grades are available in each subject. So the grades you receive will basically be based on the rank, your rank in that subject in your school. So let's say Ofqual allocates your school five A stars for history. If you're predicted an A star, but you're ranked six in, your, um, in that subject in your school, then you will get an A. But if you're predicted an A and you're fifth in that subject in your school, you'll actually get an A star. So we may see that this approach has winners and losers. So you may find that in some subjects you perhaps are getting a lower grade than predicted, but you know, in another one you may actually receive a higher grade. And you know, this isn't too different from previous years. Generally, people, um, the predicted grades aren't very accurate. So if we look at this chart on the right, which has been put together by a company called DataHE, it looks down here at predicted grades and then the grades actually achieved over the last four years. And as an example, 13,500 people were predicted to get three A's and actually achieved three A's over that period. But look at all of this group of people here who achieved less than three A's. So they were predicted three A's, but they got less. And even here, if you look, 15,500 people, so more than the number who actually hit their predicted grades, got BBC. So I guess my point is that um, if you had been able to sit exams, you might have found that your grades that you received were lower than your predicted grades or higher, but you probably would have found more, much more in control of that process. You might have known that perhaps you hadn't revised enough or the day hadn't gone particularly well for you. Um, this year, unfortunately, it's how the days went for students in past years at your school that will play a factor um, in the grades you receive. Now, there is some really good news though, so I don't want you to get um, too worried about that. The, the really good news for you guys is that you are a rare commodity this year. So this year, we'll see the lowest number of 18-year-olds in the UK. If you look at this chart on the right, this is us, this is 2020. And these are the number of 18-year-olds in the UK over the past years and predicted based on how many people have already been born. And you can see how much more competitive it will be, for example, in 2026 to apply for a university place. And in 2030, even more competitive than where we are here. So you're, you're quite rare um, in terms of 18 year olds and school leavers. Um, if you're older than that, again, you'll still benefit from that smaller pool of people. Um, we also believe that COVID-19 might mean that fewer UK students actually want to start this September. People might be wanting to wait for a January start and a lot of universities offer um, January courses. They might want to defer for a year. They might be having second thoughts about university. Um, so it may be that less people actually take up their places. We're also expecting all of us a big drop in international student numbers because of the practicalities around traveling. Um, a lot of students will be able to start their studies online, but still we think there'll be less international students. 
And so that means it's in the university's interest to offer places to as many home students as they can um, for financial reasons and for the vibrancy um, of, the, of the campus and, and the, the university and the subjects. The only caveat to that is that the government has placed a 5% cap on the number of home students that universities can offer places to this year. So before COVID even happened, universities were asked to predict how many students they thought would be joining them this September. And the government has since said, you can take that number plus 5%, but if you go beyond that, we will fine you. Um, and that's to stop some of the more prestigious or um, higher ranking universities from offering places to students they wouldn't normally accept and that having an impact on universities sort of further down the chain. Um, so it's trying to be fair and to ensure that all universities remain healthy, um, which is, is so important uh, for now, but also future people and, and the choices they have around universities. And the other big thing is that we as universities, we know grades are going to be unpredictable. So I believe, and certainly here at Buckingham, Universities are likely to be a lot more flexible um, than they have been in previous years. And you may find when you log in to UCAS track on Thursday, that even if you haven't quite met your offer grades, you may find that your offer has been confirmed. Um, because I think universities are aware um, that the grades, some of the grades are going to look a bit odd and a bit spiky. So what happens between now and results day? Well, your firm and insurance university choices have already been sent your A-level and BTEC results under what's something called embargo. So we have those results and we have to keep them secret. We're not allowed to reveal in any way to our applicants whether they have done well or not. The reason we get the results early is to enable us to make a decision. So over the weekend and right now, universities are looking at all the applicants' marks and making decisions about whether to make your offer unconditional. Um, so whether to do that, whether to reject you, or whether to offer you an alternative course. Um, and for example, you might have uh, applied for an um, economics course, you might not have quite have made the grades for that. So you may find that your university choice um, offers you geography with economics as an alternative and you will have the opportunity to decide whether you want to accept that or not. So obviously results day is Thursday the 13th of August. Um, I believe some schools are still letting students go in uh, to collect your results um, but other schools will be emailing you your results, or you'll be able to log into your school portals and see them from 8 a.m. Um, so it will be a lot earlier in the day than, than in past years that you'll have access to your results. Um, and that means that from 8 a.m. onwards, when you log into UCAS track, you'll be able to see the decisions made by your firm and insurance choices. Now, I have heard that some universities uh, are delaying some decisions. So it could be that when you log in, you don't have a decision yet and you'll have to be patient, basically, um, or call those universities to ask for an update. Um, but for many of you, when you log in, you'll have your decision. Right, so what should you be doing between now and Thursday? Um, it's really good, it'll be really good for your probably your stress levels um, if you feel prepared, just in case, just in case you end up using clearing or adjustment. Um, and watching this webinar is a really great start. But what I would really recommend is that you do some research on other universities and courses that you might be interested in. And perhaps if you want to be really organised, pull together a table or a spreadsheet like, like the one on my slide, where you can capture key details about courses that you might be interested in. You can call universities right now, you can live chat with them, you can go onto their websites and almost all of them will already list the courses they have uh, um, places in for clearing. 
and you can have a chat to them right now, ask them what sort of grades uh, you would need to get a place on that course, and then ask them lots of other things about the university and the course. If you are going to be living away from home, it's really good to check if they will have accommodation guaranteed uh, for people coming to them through clearing. Um, but then have a look around the website, look at their social media feeds, try and get a really good feel for whether it's a place you'd really um, thrive in and enjoy. Look at the, the clubs and activities they have, uh, what sort of support do they offer you, um, what are the facilities like, um, do they offer job placements, they have a really good track record of, of graduate outcomes and, and jobs that people go on to. Um, so have all of that information because I think it would be really helpful if you feel that if you end up in clearing you're then making really informed choices about the universities and courses that you actually have started to get really quite excited about. If you make a note of their clearing phone number um, then you'll have it immediately to hand. So I think when you get your results and if you end up in clearing your head might be in quite you know, a bit of a whirl. You might be feeling quite stressed. I think if you have a, a list in front of you, when you are ready, you can just pick up the phone uh, and talk to people immediately. So that's it from me. I just wanted to end up with saying good luck. Um, good luck for Thursday. Um, you know, everything happens for a reason. You may end up with some fantastic results you weren't expecting or not quite the result, result you would hope for. But if you're prepared um, for clearing, um, then I think there's a good chance you'll end up um, you know, finding a course that's a fantastic fit for you. And you may look back in years to come and think that going into clearing was the best thing you've ever done, who knows? Thank you. Thank you very much, Katrina. What an, um, an excellent overview of, of clearing. Um, really, really, really good session. I very much appreciate that. One, um, one not, not anywhere near as good as the advice that Katrina has just delivered, but one thing I, I spotted on Twitter actually today, and I thought that's a really handy thing to say, is someone suggested with clearing maybe to have two phones, uh, one for incoming calls, one for outcoming calls. And I thought, you know, it's such a, a basic tip, but actually something that'll be really, really useful when speaking to universities and, and perhaps any mm -hmm. universities you to as well so Katrina really really appreciate your time I know how busy you are at the moment so very grateful for that okay. and just to confirm like I said right at the start if you've got friends family members or if any teachers are watching this for these school groups we'll do our best to get these videos at unitastedays.com forward slash Tuesdays first thing tomorrow morning noting how time sensitive this all is thanks Katrina brilliant our, our next speaker is Hannah Wake who's joining us from uh, the University of East Anglia Hannah is a higher education advisor also mega mega busy um, at present so I'm really grateful for Hannah's time today and Hannah's going to deliver a session looking actually on results day itself and what to expect on the day obviously with, with clearing in mind so with that Hannah I'll pass the floor to you please. My name's Hannah and I am a higher education advisor at the University of East Anglia and I'm hopefully it's going to be a nice um, introduction into what actually happens directly on results day what to expect and in several ways there'll be a few hints and tips hopefully you'll be able to gather as we go through the session um, and especially it's in a timely manner not too far away we've got a couple of days until those all important results will be coming through and you'll find out what your next steps are but ultimately some little pearls of how you can prepare just beforehand and really maximize the most of the fantastic processes and facilities that are out there and um, so you get the results that you want so Hopefully a lot of this information you will already know, but some of it is a, is a refresher or will be some additional extra bits of information. So UCAS track officially updates at 8am on the 13th of August. And through that, um, hopefully you'll be familiar with that image on the right hand side of the screen. So log in through the usual information that, that you will be using um, and you'll be able to basically see what the outcome is. So you'll be, in, be able to interpret the status that is on there. However, it won't actually show you what your achieved grades are therefore it's imperative that you find out beforehand how are you actually going to receive your results from your centre from the school or college or if you, you're through an affiliated centre how are you actually going to get to receive those results to find out the actual classification 
uh, and the qualifications that you've got. So I've put underneath there email, is it a secure database or in person? Now, hopefully this is information you already know, but also it's really important to find out at exactly what time can you get those results from. Um, and part of that is because when you're contacting institutions, regardless of what the outcome or the status um, of your qualifications have been, if you're needing to speak to an institution, even though UCAS sends us as the institution, the body, we get to find out what grades you have. We need to hear them from you. So it really is important that you don't just see your UCAS track update and start to act from there. You really do need to make sure that you've received those results as well and that you have those to hand. Now, I know this looks like quite a busy piece of imagery on the screen, but even if you were to print screen this afterwards or if you're going to look at this recording afterwards, I think it's quite a really succinct version of what the potential outcomes can be and then what the actions are afterwards. So I'm not going to spend the whole session dissecting this, um, but I also just think it's a really good tool um, for you to be able to see with some of the phrasing that you will actually see on results day. So I'm going to unpack a few of those. Um, and you'll see here that these are three um, quite common outcomes um, and they're in the different coloured pathways. So on the top line there, those three boxes are directly what you would see on your UCAS track. Now that first one, congratulations, your place at insert university name for insert course title has been confirmed. You've got your place, you've been accepted at that university or college, great news, check the details carefully in track and wait to hear from the university. So they will either get in touch with you by email usually, or they may get in touch with you um, by telephone if they have any more intricacies or pieces of information that they need from you. But they'll inform you of what all of their next steps may be. Obviously you still need to find out what your grades are, but in that instance, congratulations, you've got your place. So another potential option, so that, sorry, that could be either at your firm institution or at your insurance institution, and that would be reflective of what the university name is, and as a result, the course title. Now, the other option, one of the alternative options is you're in clearing, your clearing number is, and it will insert a number. You need to make sure that you jot that number down. It'll come in very handy later on and I'll talk a little bit about that as well. This basically means that you didn't meet the conditions of the offer. Um, so you can now apply for a course available in clearing. And I'm going to unpack this central strip quite a lot um, in terms of what actually obviously happens if you're in clearing. So the third option is um, sometimes a little bit different because it means that you may then actually step into clearing, uh, but it also may not. Basically, we'll let you know that one of the universities or colleges, so sometimes it's numerous, it may be both your firm and insurance that's showing up, and it says they've offered you an unconditional place with substantial changes to your original choice. So basically, you've heard back from your choices and at least one of these options, it could mean that there is a course change. So an example of this may be that you apply for a three-year, let's say, pharmacy degree program. And actually, the, the change may be for a chemistry degree, it may be for pharmaceutical chemistry, it may be for pharmacology and drug discovery, or it may be a modification with an attached foundation year subject to what you achieved in those grades. Now, what you need to do in this instance is check the details of the change course offer in track. Obviously, is it a course that you're actually interested in? And decide if you would like to accept this changed offer. So obviously, if you do not want to accept the changed offer, this may be the instance when you would then opt in um, and you would or enter into the clearing process. Now to unpack this a little bit, the option that was added to self-release into clearing was added last year. So 2019 was the first year that we saw this. And this is for people if you no longer wish to take up your unconditional offer and want to apply elsewhere. Now this was introduced last year as an um, let's say an adaptation of historically if you didn't want to study at your firm choice you would automatically um, be able to get in touch with that institution to release yourself to be able to go into your insurance choice or alternatively you would call your insurance choice if you placed at your insurance choice and you would ask them to release you into clearing. Now to speed up the process essentially because universities have so much to do not just in the week leading up to but especially on the day of results day on the 13th of August and days around that it basically means that you can speed up that process yourself. You the applicant you can sign into track and you click the decline my place button. You will then be able to take to a place 
a, a page which explains all about what you're about to do. And basically this is to make sure you don't really make that much of an error. There are lots of, are you sure you would like to do this? Are you sure you would like to be um, declining this place? Just to clarify, that's definitely what you would like. A drop down question pops up and you must complete this before confirming. So there are lots of stages to clarify. That's ultimately what you'd like to do. You then receive an email to confirm that you're in clearance, but also it says, please, they advise you to phone the university if you've accidentally made a mistake by declining. So this, in this instance, is, I guess, the next step into you actually going into clearing. So this is an adaptation um, by self-releasing into clearing that obviously wasn't on that previous slide. Now, talking about things that were introduced, we have a new function that's been introduced this year for 2020, Clearing Plus. Some of you may have heard of it already. A few people have got confused and thought it's completely separate to clearing. They're different processes and I think it's fantastic that UCAS are adapting and they're trying to think about how can they make the process as easy as possible. So for applicants who are entering into clearing, so have not been placed or let's say are unhappy with their firm or insurance, um, the typical route that people would have historically chosen would be they would actively themselves explore the options that are available in clearing. So the 30,000 courses and they would be able to explore that through the UCAS search tool. Now Clearing Plus that's been introduced this year, it is an algorithm that has been set up or UCAS have put in a lot of groundwork to look into what you initially expressed an interest in and potentially up to those five courses when you first applied through UCAS. They then would also look at your actual achieved qualifications and grades. And ultimately, the hard work behind the scene is UCAS calculates some matches. So of what institutions have courses available that also will meet your profile as an applicant. So you'll be able to log into your track and you'll be able to see view my matches, view your matches. And basically it will come up as an option where you are able to scroll through to have a look at those options of courses in relation to technically matching with your achieved grades and qualifications. And there is a function that you can click on that allows an institution, so that institution for that course, to directly get in touch with you. And what will happen is that information gets sent to the institution. So let's say for example, myself, if I'm making the phone calls on the 13th of August, I will get a notification that will come through at my end and it will say, this person's expressed an interest in you getting in touch with them for this course. And I will then be able to actively make a phone call. You've given me permission to be able to make a phone call to yourself. Now, both are fantastic options in terms of you exploring what is available and what is out there. But what is absolutely imperative that we stress here, the clearing phone lines typically will open around 8 a.m. So at the University of East Anglia, where I work, on Thursday, we will be opening our clearing call lines at 8 a.m., which means you can call us from 8 a.m. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, hopefully you found out what the status is on track and you've hopefully already got your grades. And if not, you'll just have to wait until you give us a phone call. Now, ultimately, through Clearing Plus, I know for my institution this year and other institutions, because of when we'll start to receive the data of who we can phone call, we won't be making as an institution outbound calls until later on into the day. So we might not be starting until about half past nine. Now, we know that there are a limited number of available courses through clearing and maybe some of those more competitive courses that you're interested in, they may get snapped up quite quickly. So one of the options would be have a little bit of a scroll through, see what those matches are. You can still press a button to say, I would like the institution to contact me, but it may be that they have so many calls to be making, they don't get in touch with you and that course is then no longer available because somebody else has taken the space. So it really is important to maximize the clearing function of you actively getting in touch with institutions. So in terms of what actually happens, you found yourself, you're in clearing, you're exploring what courses are available through clearing. And I've briefly touched on it a little bit, but you need to look for which courses are available through the clearing vacancy search within UCAS's course search tool. Now we would say this first and foremost, because that is the function where they're kept up to date as quickly as possible, essentially. So that's the most live function. You can also use individual universities clearing search functions on their websites, but maybe what they're asking for and the availability is not directly reflective and it is imperative that you directly contact the university to discuss your options. So you'll find on the 13th when you're looking at different institutions websites through the direct um, web link for that university you'll see they'll have their number plastered on the top there'll be options for live chat you can contact admissions as well but the most imminent response method is either for a live chat function or for you to speak to them on the phone. But do be patient 
thousands of students, thousands of applicants, thousands of teachers, loads of people try to get in touch with us on the day. Just be a little bit patient in case you're in, in a, a line of waiting, essentially, which really does hone in on the idea of if you can use multiple devices and you can have multiple people trying to make a phone call to get through to different institutions to be on and waiting at different times, it's just most important that you as the applicant get to speak to us. You can speak to us first and say, I'm giving permission to potentially a parent or a teacher or a member of staff um, at school. You can say that, but we need to speak to you first and foremost. But through the UCAS um, course search tool as well, there's the direct link on there where it'll have the university's clearing call lines as well. So just make sure you're exploring what courses are available, not just because you've once looked at a prospectus and you saw that they once did a course, because it, the grade requirements are often rather different um, and not all courses will be available through clearing. It's subject to what spaces are still available. So in terms of contacting universities, first and foremost, we've talked a little bit about being prepared, but make sure you prepare your documentation. Not just that you have potentially your A-levels, IB, Scottish hires, BTEC qualification, CTEC, whatever qualification it may be, prepare that documentation so you have it directly in front of you as a point of reference. But also with that respect in mind, also your GCSE grades, because some institutions will also need to check that you're meeting the conditions of that current clearing course. And it may be that they need to look for some GCSE equivalents um, um, not just in your English and maths, but maybe other courses as well. Have your clearing number, so that will be on track if it says you're in clearing, and also your UCAS personal ID to hand. So, for example, at the University of East Anglia, we don't ask for your clearing number, we ask for your UCAS personal ID. Some other institutions will only look for your clearing number. It depends on how the university operates, so please do make sure you've got both to hand. So whilst you've waited for so long, potentially in a, um, a waiting line, please do make sure you've got that to speed up the process for yourself. Top tip to have your phone charged, not just so you can maximise making all those phone calls, but it may be the case that an institution is actually going to call you back. You want to make sure that you're ready to take that phone call as well. Making notes as you go through the conversation. They may say something quite useful that you hadn't thought about from that institution. You may have the opportunity to talk in a little bit more detail about the course. You may have the opportunity to ask about accommodation or social activities. And they may be some really crucial aspects of your decision making process. Any useful bits of information affiliated with that institution, all part of that being prepared beforehand, but also to be prepared on the day as well. Then the next stage is hopefully exploring the option of ver verbal offers. So if you've made the phone call, you've got through to a representative, they're asking you for your grades, are there any spaces available on this course? If you meet the grade requirements for that clearing course, you can get as many verbal offers as possible. So if we start the timeline and we, let's say you've already got your grades, from um, your school or college at 8am you've already seen what the update is on track you're in clearing you can make as many phone calls as possible and technically if you meet those requirements you can receive as many verbal offers as possible now i've put a little asterisk here that says check how long they're valid for some may only be for a few hours but typically they'll be for a 24-hour period or a little bit longer than that 24-hour period which basically means from that time frame within that time frame, you need to make sure that if you want to accept that offer, you need to do that within that time frame. Now, this is where it gets a little bit difficult because you obviously want to shop around, you want to look at what is available, but you need to make sure if you're going to make a decision on that verbal offer, you can only hold it for a certain period of time because there may be somebody else who wants that space. Then that important second deadline in the day is 3 p.m. So from 3 p.m. on this year, for, so for 2020 entrance, the 13th of August, you can add clearing choices yourself to your UCAS track. So it's only from 3 p.m. You can go through, select the institution and the course. You can only add one choice at a time. Okay, so this is where it's important to accept as many verbal offers as possible, because then once you've made your decision from 3 p.m., you are able to do that. It may be that you have until 3 p.m. the next day. So it might be that you want to think about spending that time to really decide which institution is right for you. Now, we have briefly talked a little bit about adjustment in this session. Um, and I want to just talk a little bit about some parallels with the clearing and adjustment process as the, the, the principle of why you would enter the process is different as it's really the same, the idea for you to reconsider where and what you'd like to study. But it, it's usually the idea of you've exceeded the conditions of your offer. So you've actually achieved better grades than you'd initially needed to meet 
for that course that you've got the conditional firm has changed into an unconditional firm um, and you can potentially swap your place so again the process is different you need to select for adjustment in track contact university to see what's available but the process that's a little bit different here is when you're speaking to as many universities as possible and inquiring about courses have you got any spaces these are my grades could i potentially get a place you can only accept one verbal offer for adjustment because instead of you as the applicant adding the option of that institution and course into track for clearing for adjustment you the, the university the institution puts it onto your ucas track and then you would select it so you can only accept one um, verbal offer for the institution to action that onto your UCAS track to see. Um, and as we did hear a little bit earlier, um, when the university adds that onto your track, you, you can still hold your original offer. So say for example, you met the conditions of your firm university, but you exceeded those conditions. So you want to have a look around what else might be available. You can still hold that original offer with your firm, um, firm university, and you can hold your offer for up to five 24 hour periods from when your track initially updated in the morning. So let's say you've got the results at 8am on the 13th of August, it would be five 24 hour periods. So it would then be five days later at 8am that you would be able to still continue to hold that original offer um, and your adjustment offer. So making decisions, please don't just go for your first clearing offer we very frequently talk about the concerns of anxiety and stress and panic and goodness me i've not got the grades that i was hoping to be achieving um there's so much still available and it is there is a process um, of really being prepared and exploring what is available to you so just because you've got one verbal offer for um your course that you might be interested in or potentially even a different course don't just go for that first one when it comes to 3 p.m do make sure you're still exploring there's quite a nice grace period between that 8 a.m and 3 p.m before you, you you can start to make that decision and accept your offer really dig into the course details so once you're now looking into different courses just like you did in the first instance don't just think oh that's an English course. I was going to apply for English in the first instance, as we really do know that the modules as a part of that degree program really can differ. Um, and it's about what makes up the day to day. So looking at facilities, looking at resources, are there any areas of expertise? Can you ultimately imagine yourself studying and living there? In some instances, you might be looking at studying three, four, five, or potentially even more years at one institution. You still want to get that same level of excitement and buzz. So please do make sure you're really looking into making the right decision, even through clearing. Maximise the clearing resources to inform yourself. So ultimately, what are universities offering where you can still find out information? Is it that they've got any clearing open days where obviously socially distanced or potentially virtual open days for you to explore their offering? Thinking about that grace period of time that you have, you don't have to make an instant decision. Those verbal offers are made with a condition of you have until X amount of time where this is still valid. So use that time. Have you got the option to visit the university for a personalised campus tour? Obviously, again, following current government guidelines, see what's available and out there, not just exploring university websites, but have you got the option to chat to an academic or to chat to somebody from professional services or to maybe speak to a current student who might be doing your course there's lots of live chat functions that are going to be available please make sure as we encourage from the first stage of your exploring your institution and your university journey that you're still imploring exactly the same techniques and processes so that when you make that decision it's the right one and it's an educated one and what's it come down to to your next steps maybe afterwards you've made your decision you've explored hopefully followed those steps of really really deciding what's the right institution and what's the right course for you under the current circumstances you have the option to add that institution onto track the university then follows all the important processes afterwards and then they will be able to send you through all of the important paperwork for your next steps so it might be in relation to the course, it might be more in relation to accommodation or any other bits that are relevant to the institution. So make sure you're filling all of that out in a timely manner as again, there may be a few restrictions um, to ensure that you can get accommodation guaranteed, for example. Um, they may ask you for some supporting documentation. So maybe you told them, for example, you wanted to study, um, um, let's say, maths, and they wanted to see your GCSE a little bit higher than the typical base grades that might be asked for um, for most courses in the UK. So they might ask to see proof of that GCSE qualification. So they might ask for you to send that. Do obviously find out how you can send that to them in, in, in as quick of a manner as possible.
And ultimately make sure you con your contact details are up to date. So there's the your details section of UCAS track. You might have filled that out absolutely yonks ago. Um, but it ultimately is important because that will those will be the contact details that if anything is going to get start to be sent out to you. So maybe your welcome pack, it may be information about your start date, it might be about how can you still get involved in welcome week given the current situation, some reading list to get ahead of the game, maybe your accommodation information, you may only have let's say two working days to be able to accept that. You want to make sure that that information you've inputted in your details is correct so that the, the institution can get in touch with you if they actually need to. And I think ultimately it leads us to say, get excited for what the next few stages are going to be. University life is some of the best time of some people's lives. And no matter how you've got there or how results day may pan out for you, especially under the current circumstances, if you follow all of the right stages and the right processes and you make sure that when you're making a decision, it isn't just on a whim, it's after exploring all of the information that is out there and start to get excited. Join what social groups might be available for maybe the accommodation halls that you're moving into. Are there any social media pages about the course that you're actually going to be starting? We work with hundreds of thousands of um, schools and colleges or academic advisors all the way through to prospective students and current students as well. And having worked at a few different institutions, have come across loads of people who've entered through university through the process potentially clearing potentially adjustment and I don't think you look at a student and ever think they didn't really want to come here or they did really want to come here it's about you making sure that however you've got there you know every single stage has been researched and ultimately you're excited to come and join whoever that institution might be in whatever course that may be thank you so much for joining and listening today